Good evening, River Life Church International. Glad you're joining us for our Wednesday night Bible study. Um, Pastor Jim is going to be taking some time off, um, a few days off going into next week. So by next week, Pastor Jim should be back um, preaching, sharing on Wednesdays um, on the Holy Spirit. Pastor Jim has been sharing these past weeks on the Holy Spirit. What a great opportunity it's been for all of us to join in and, and grow in our deep under, deeper understanding of the Holy Spirit. And, and what an opportunity we have to tune in on Wednesdays on, at 7 o'clock. And so we're just so thankful that you're tuning in tonight. And, and we just pray that you are blessed and, um, by, by the Word. And he's been sharing on the Holy Spirit how the Holy Spirit hovers, lives within us, and how the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And, and I want to continue this evening on a thought, continuing on the Holy Spirit as the revealer. And what a provoking thought that the Holy Spirit, our revealer, in John 16, 13, says, When the Holy Spirit comes, truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. John 16, 13. We know that the Holy Spirit has been given to us as a gift. We know Jesus preached about this, about, about the, the gift, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus would talk to his disciples, part of his teaching, that it is better for me to go so that my Father can send the great advocate, a helper, the Holy Spirit. And the, the, the disciples didn't gr quite grasp this until that day, that day of Pentecost, that day in the upper room when, when, the, when, when the Father sent the Holy Spirit. And we know that this is a promise that's still for us today. A guiding promise. A promise that does much revealing. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. A Holy Spirit. We read this in John 16, 13. Again, it says, when the, when the Spirit of truth comes, and I know Pastor Jim covered this a few weeks ago as he talked about the Spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. And he will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. And he will tell you about the future. A revealer. A revealer of truth. A revealer of things that we need to know as the children of God. Things that we need to know as we move forward in our walk, in our pursuit of God and, and pursuit of holiness, a pursuit of, of being sanctified, this journey that, of growth that God wants to take us on. The Holy Spirit, the revealer. For, for something to be revealed, as I was thinking about this, as I was putting this together, as I was studying and praying, I started thinking about, for something to be revealed, it had to to be of first hidden, it had to be hidden first or out of sight. It could be something hidden so well. And, and as I was thinking about this, I was reminded of earlier this year, a guy by the name of Forrest Fenn hid a buried treasure of worth over a million dollars of diamonds, jewels, gold coins, and, and other precious metals somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. And he would give clues through, he was a writer, and give uh, clues through his books and poems and different things. And for over 10 years, people have been trying to find this buried treasure, something that has been hidden. And, 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 and as I did some digging and, and, and reading on this earlier this year, and there's people that have been caught in some dangerous situations trying to find what was hidden. They've, there's been search and rescue. There's been, I, I can't remember if anybody's been hurt or, or killed in the, in, in the search. But earlier this year, someone figured out the clue. And it, it fell under a writing, a, a poem, I believe, in one of his books that gave the key. And this guy figured it out 
and found the buried treasure earlier this year, 2020. And what he found is worth a lot, over a million dollars. Something that's so, that w- was hidden very good and was, you know, you didn't want it to be found right away, even saying, if it doesn't be found, it doesn't get found. But something hidden so hard. And many, and it could be as simple. You know, something hidden can be as simple as a toddler asking where their juice cup is when it's right there in their own hands. I can't tell you how many times uh, Judd has said, where's my cup, where's my juice? And I said, Judd, it's in your hand. And he looked down and he just started laughing. So the degree of things to be revealed, things that are hidden, the degrees differ in complexities. That there's some things that are not hidden very well that are easily found. And some things that are hidden so difficultly that it takes some time, it takes some wisdom, it takes some searching, it takes resources to be able to find. From the beginning of time to our present day we're living in, there's been hidden things. Things that have, there's things that are hidden that have no business of doing anything with us that we have, just, we're not connected to. But there's other things that are hidden, that hit us right at our own doorstep. Personally, in our families, in our communities, even in our churches, um, in, our, in our state, our region, and our nation, and our world. There's things that are hidden. There's things that are going on that are complex, that are hidden, that have an effect on us in different degrees. And as we know there are things that are hidden and things that are going on, we must confront the operations that lurk in the hidden. And I'm, hit, I'm hitting more into now I'm shifting into the spiritual things that are hidden. And that the spiritual things that are hidden, the things that are lurking, need to be confronted. But confronted in a very specific way. There's a key to confronting these things that as Christians that we got to understand, that we have to, we have to take hold of if we're to confront the things that are hidden in an impactful way. See, when it comes to the working of the enemy in, in nations, regions, states, groups, families, and even individuals, that, that there are things that are hidden or done in secret that don't want to be exposed or revealed. And, and you read through the scripture, the Old Testament and the New Testament, whatever the enemy has its hands in wants to do it without being detected. He wants to, he wants to do things that are, that, that are in secret, that are hidden, that doesn't want to be exposed. Because he knows what happens when things are exposed. When his thoughts and his his ideas, his exploits are exposed. And he'll do everything he can. And his confederation will do whatever he can. What they can do to stay hidden. To not be revealed and not to be exposed. But I have some good news for you. And, and as we are talking about the Holy Spirit, the one who reveals, the revealer, God has a promise for you and I. And the times that we're living in, the times, the confusion, the complexities of what's going on in the world around us, God will bring everything hidden into the light. 
See, enemies can be sneaky. They will say cutting words to us, whether people know it or not, but the enemy sneaks into our minds, into our thoughts, into our whispers, into our ears, and will even threaten us, you and I, secretly, try to cheat us out of opportunities, money, and even relationships, things that that are in, were intended to walk and in things that were intended to fulfill, the enemy will do whatever he can to try to cheat us out of those things in secret. Very covert-like. But in the midst of all of this, here is one who sees everything that is done in secret, the hidden agendas, and he says, and I want you to be encouraged with this, this, this word here tonight, people, is found in Luke 8, 17. Nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Did you catch that? In Luke 8, 17, Jesus says, Nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Amen. That means the things that are hidden. The things that the enemy is trying to, trying to get into the cracks of our lives, into, into the areas of our lives, the vulnerability, the, the weakness areas of our life. Because we know we're people and we, are, we have weaknesses. We have weak areas. And we're dealing with someone that isn't stupid. Is but isn't. And will do everything that he can to, to have control. He's a copier of God. He tries, he's, a, he's a, um, a counterfeiter. Just how God wants control in our lives, the devil wants to have control. The enemy wants to have control. See, as you and I feel the pressures, the stress, the anxiety, the fear, the confusion, physically, spiritually, emotionally, starting to come upon you or on your family, city, state, nation, even churches in the world. When we start feeling these things, that the enemy is, we, we, we realize there's something going on here. Okay, I'm feeling this. There's a reason for this. This, the, the anxiety, the pressure, the stress, the anxiety, the confusion, the the, the backbiting, the betrayal, whatever it might be, the list goes on and on and on. The things that we are experiencing in our day-to-day -day lives, whatever it is in our families or in our jobs, in our, in our homes or in, the, in our personal lives, in, the, in, in our churches, in our, in our communities, our state, whatever it might be, when we start sensing something going on, we got to remember we need to stop and say, okay, Holy Spirit, you are a revealer. Holy Spirit, you know what's going on. You say only what you hear the Father saying. And what you share with me, Holy Spirit, is right from the heart of the Father. I'm going to stop right now and say, Holy Spirit, reveal to me what is going on. Reveal to me what is going on in my situation. And that you and I need to begin to declare supernatural exposure. A supernatural exposure that is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the living God. A supernatural exposure that is light. And we know what is hidden in the dark areas when the light of the Lord Jesus Christ shines forth, it exposes. Because we got to understand, people, is that you and I can't tear down what we can't see. I'm going to say that again. You and I can't tear down what we can't see. 
And the, the, the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to you and I that the roots of what's going on in our situation, in our, in our lives, our, our circumstances, what we are going through. That might that is confusing that we don't have understanding on, but we know that God is the Spirit. He sent His Holy Spirit, the Spirit of understanding, to give you and I revelation, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom on what's going on. It's all connected. See Jeremiah. See God. God says something to Jeremiah here. In chapter 1, verses 9 through 10, I want you to catch here. It says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Wow. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant catch that again. Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. See, what comes here first in the scripture here is that before the building and the planting could take place, Jeremiah had to uproot and pull down. Before the, before the rebuilding and the restructuring and the planting could take place, Jeremiah had to first uproot and to pull down. And he needed to know. He needed revelation from God. The anointing of the Spirit upon him to know what to pull down and to uproot. See, it's no different for you and I today. See, the Holy Spirit wants to help us by revealing what is taking place in our lives, families, churches, city, state, region, nation, and world. Because we know we, there's a lot going on and we need answers. See, the Holy Spirit wants to give answers. Yeah, we understand we only know in part, but hey, are we even getting that far into knowing in part? Are we even seeking God enough to know what we need to know, what God wants to reveal to us? Are we asking? See, the Holy Spirit wants to activate discernment in us. He wants to reveal that to us and to, and to still that, activate that within us so that we, we know what is agitating us because the devil is an agitator. And the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us what is agitating us in the hidden, the secret, and the covert operations of the enemy so that we can build up and plant so that we can restore so that we can move forward we, to, to, to get to into the better the best things of God because God wants to take us better than where we were when we first started walking with him he has a plan and a purpose for us as individuals, as families, as churches, as communities. We know that things are just, there's going to be things that have to happen in our world. Jesus said that they would. But there are some things that we do not have to go through. And the Holy Spirit wants to reveal those things to us so that we can have victory, that we can move forward. That we don't have to go backwards, but we can go forwards in the name of Jesus. It takes insight of the Holy Spirit to know what we're up against. Let me catch that again. It takes insight of the Holy Spirit to know what we are up against. And then an action plan from our God must be put into action and executed to completion. I'm going to say that again. It takes insight of the Holy Spirit to know what we're up against so that we can get an action plan from our God so that we can put it into action so that it would be executed to completion. See, revealing the hidden in, in spiritual warfare must occur before the healing and rebuilding can take place. See, there has to be 
exposure. First, as we're, we're warfaring spiritually, as we, are, as we are fighting, as we are praying, as we're recognizing that our, our war is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, that we're not in war with people or situation, but we're in war with, a, with an enemy that has, has his, his, his tentacles in a lot of different things. And we need a war. And as we warfare, as we ask God, as we depend on the Holy Spirit to reveal the hidden, we're going to, we're going to start seeing turnaround. We're going to start seeing things happen in our lives, in our families, in our churches, our communities, where God has given us influence, and where God wants to take us. But we have a part to play. Just as God has what, he'll do what only he can do. We have to recognize that, but we also have a part to play. Just like what Pastor Jim shared on Sunday, there's conditions that we have to meet in order to get the promises, the rewards. Same thing. We have a responsibility to warfare, to, to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal in our specific situations. I want to leave you also with a thought is that as you're asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, he wants to give you spiritual gifts. And I won't read the scriptures here, but study them out. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. The different giftings that the Holy Spirit wants to give you and I. He wants to reveal good gifts. The good things that he has for us. The Spirit also wants to reveal miraculous signs and wonders in our lives. And as we... As we we, we hit those things where the, the, that he's revealing that the enemy is hidden. We're going to see signs. We're going to see wonders. We're going to see miracles happen in our lives. And you could read the, the evidence of that happening in Hebrews 2.4 and 1 Corinthians 2.4, Romans 15.19. Study those out. The evidence of what only God bringing the miraculous the signs and wonders. And God is so ready to reveal his good things to us. He's a good father. He has great gifts for us. He has, he has the tools and the resources we need. And he wants to reveal that. So I encourage you this evening in your homes and, and the rest of this week. You say, Holy Spirit, I recognize that you are the revealer. That God has sent you. To be my guide and my help, my comforter, and, and, and the one who's going to direct me in what I'm going through. And that wherever you, there's confusion, wherever there's still something going on in your lives, you can ask the Holy Spirit to reveal. Press in. Ask him. And he wants to reveal that to you. This is just in one, of, one of the other ways that the Holy Spirit works in our lives as the revealer. So let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those that are tuning in this evening and, and are going to tune in later on, Lord God. I just ask in the name of Jesus that, God, you know exactly what they're going through in their lives. And, Lord God, that we thank you for sending your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we're so thankful that you're here with us and upon us and dwelling within us and, and moving within our lives. And Lord God, forgive us for not recognizing and, 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 and calling upon you more. Holy Spirit, would you reveal the things that are hidden? Jesus, you promised that nothing that is hidden would stay hidden. And Lord God, that we know that in order to to go forward. We need some things that are hidden to come to exposure so we know how to pull down, to bind, and to defeat the works of the devil. Because Jesus, that's why you came, to defeat the works of the devil. And Lord God, that you've given us that same authority in the name of Jesus, that same authority in the power of the Holy Spirit to pull down the works of the enemy. Lord God, open our eyes to see, reveal to our eyes, Revealed to our ears by opening them up. And Lord God, let our hearts be softened to the movement of your Holy Spirit so that we navigate our situations. 
how we're supposed to with your help, Holy Spirit. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you this evening. God bless you the rest of the week. See you Sunday.